In the name of Jesus. God bless you so much for joining me once again. Amen. 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 Today is our 90th episode. Wow. Whoever thought that we are going to come this far. But it is by the grace of God. And I want to believe that when you come to the place whereby you are driven by purpose, then you will not allow anything to obstruct you from being able to fulfill that purpose. Am I making sense to you? And it all happens as you now come to the place of encountering the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. I want to welcome each and every one of you to tarry until. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus commanded his disciples that tarry until ye be endued with power. Am I making sense? So until God makes us, until God clothes us with glory, until God empower us, until God explode his glory through us, we are not going to stop praying. We're not going to stop waiting upon him. We are not going to stop. Am I, am, I, am I making sense to someone? So, thank God for your life. Also, if you are joining us, I want you to share the stream. I want you to share the stream with a friend. I see Abby on there, baby, if you are one. I see anytime I see you, I'm going to invite you up. Amen. So, um, share the stream on TikTok. Share it on what, uh, WhatsApp. Share it on Instagram. Share it wherever you can You can share it, all right? So that we can all gather together and pray and spend time in the presence of the living God. Spend time in the presence of the living God. I want you to lift up. The Bible says that we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, right? I want you to lift up the name of the Lord. Begin to lift up the name of the Lord. Even if you don't have words to say, I want you to tap into the music that is playing in the background and let that become a foundational point for worship and begin to lift up the name of the Lord because he is Elohim. Oh my God. We give you praise, O God. We exalt you, Jehovah. You are the supreme one. You are the great I am that I am. You alone, you are worthy, O God. You are Elohim, the Supreme One, the Supreme One, the Supreme One, the Supreme One. You are God, you are God, you are God. We exalt you, Jesus. We lift your name on high. Hallelujah. Lama canta rabada braza vale badoja. Ika pande breda badoja rabada daha. Maka pandi bibi abradoja re. Jamana banana mazanka panda braza za ya baha. Reke pala branda bada brazan tole brenda deha. Ika panda brada bazan tala la badoja. Come on, lift up your voice. Begin to acknowledge him in this place that you are Elohim, the Supreme One. You are El Shaddai, the Almighty God. You are El Elyon. Your name is Jehovah. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Nisi. We exalt your supremacy, O oh God. We magnify your holy name, for there is no God like our God. There is no king like our king. Ah, matara badazel, reke panda brada bada brazan talalamaha, ika panda brada bada zoze redadeha, yaka panda bala brado zore keke, Iman tala brada ya, ya bala branda bada zuzereka, ya pan tala branda bala bado shereya, ye kontom to rebe de brende deze, imaka panda brada ba, you are Adonai, you are El Shaddai, you are Elohim, we bless your holy name, oh praise the Lord, oh ye people, 
for he is worthy. He is worthy to be exalted. He is worthy to be glorified. He is worthy to be magnified. His name is I am that I am. Makontobre de Babizaya. Yekontole reke papa. Matule rebezuze rezekaya. Remantole brende bedede. Who is like unto thee, O God? Among the gods uh, who is like unto thee, you are glorious in holiness and you are fearful in praise. You are doing wonders. Hallelujah. Thank you for the roses, Abby. Zemande brede de zuze reke pa remala ba 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 jamranda ba da ba ika panda brada ba zanta la la ba ba eko le brede ba zuze rebe de brende de ba zaka pa ya kapando zere we give you all the praise of God we give you all the glory for there is no God like our God there is no king like our king there is no king like our king who is like unto you among the God you are glorious in holiness and you are fearful in praise you are fearful in praise you are fearful in praise man those Rebecca in the name of Jesus the Bible says that we have come to God by the blood sprinkling I want somebody under the sound of my voice this afternoon to begin to plead the blood of Jesus begin to sprinkle the blood of jesus uh, the blood that is spotless without wrinkle the blood the blood the blood the blood the blood lift up your voice and plead the blood of jesus uh, plead the blood of jesus uh, the blood of jesus uh, the blood of jesus uh, Ima branda bada ba reke pani badoze rebede ha ya mana mana nama zanta la la branda ba ya kapala branda bada zuze rebede ha imanta la branda bada ba yeke pala branda doze re ipale reba dosha mana mana mazaya yeko branda bada zaya imanta la la bala la branda bada la baza branda bala ba reke pala babra zanta la la bada la baba imanta la branda bada Eco Branda Bada Babra Santa Lava, Rebada Brazanta Lava Branda Ba, Eco Palabrada Bada Bazanta Lava Doja, E Palaba, E Capalaba Braza Banto Lava, Rebado Zerabada Ba, E Manta Branda, Eco Panda Bradaza, E Manta Labadosha, Rebada Brenda Bele Bazu, Raka Papa, E Branda Palabaza, Eco Panda Brenda. Come on, plead the blood, the blood that sanctifies, the blood that cleanses, the blood that purifies, the blood that consecrates. Come on, Shapalusere. I shook my children in the blood. I shook everyone that is under the sound of my voice in the blood. I pray, oh God, that the blood that cleanses will wash us and cleanse us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now listen, one of the advantages of the blood is that we are able to come before the throne of grace boldly. So he says that because of the blood, we can now boldly come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy. To obtain what? To obtain mercy. The other day I was saying that mercy is compassion. Mercy is compassion. And because of the mercies of God, our weaknesses are overlooked. Am I making sense to you? God overlooks our weaknesses uh, and grants us grace uh, for the journey that is ahead. So I want you to pray this afternoon that God, uh, I pray for mercy. The Bible says that the mercies of God, they are new every morning. Uh, so God, look upon me with mercy and 
grant me grace in the name of Jesus. Look upon me with mercy and strengthen me, O God, for you give strength to the weak and you give power to the powerless. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lift up your voice and begin to pray that God, I am tapping into the grace that you have released for today. I am tapping into divine mercy. Father, let your mercies be extended towards me, O God, and towards my family, towards the ministry. O oh, Lord, my God, lepali badoze, lembranda badaza, ipale rebede de bazan tola branda bada, rebede brazen kontole baba. Imbrana mana maza, rebele bada branda bada bazan tola baba, reke pala branda ba, ya pala bada zo branda ba, ika pala branda dozele be. He brand the Bradaza, Raka Pala Badazuza, Yaman Talabranda Ba, Yamala Brada Bada Badaza, Cabo Pray, Lord, I need your mercy, Reka Pali Badoze, He Branta Balabada, Reke Pali Badada Brazoza, Yamrana Bada Branda Bacapa, He Pale Rebede de Brezoya, Yaka Pandi Bidi Apa. If you are watching on YouTube, if you are watching on TikTok, if you are watching on Facebook, lift up your voice and say, Father, I pray for mercy. Because of your mercy, O oh God, we are not consumed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, when Jesus was strategically teaching the disciples how to pray, he told them something that they must pray for. He says that when you are praying, pray that give us this day our daily bread. That means every day has an assigned provision for you. God is so wise that every day he has an assigned and allotted provision for you. Now, if you don't ask, it will not be given unto you. If you don't seek, you will not find. Enough with the excuses that if God wants to do it, he will do it. No. He says, if you ask me, I will give it to you. So I want us to pray that, Lord, according to your word, give us this day our daily bread. See, bread is something that we eat. Okay? If we are talking about the physical, bread is food. When food enters into your mortal body, it strengthens and it sustains you. So give us this day our daily bread. That means that the daily provision that you have provided for to sustain us, to sustain the marriage, to sustain our children, to sustain the ministry, to sustain our physical body, to sustain us in every area, sustain us in the purpose, and to sustain us in the assignment. Lord, let it be released. Lift up your voice and pray to God. Give me this day my daily bread. Give me this day my daily bread. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. That daily dose of grace. Come on, come on. That oil, that oil that needs to flow. That grace. Rapati palima. Maybe it may be a connection. Maybe it is a ministry helper that is to locate you today. Lift up your voice and say, This day, Lord, let the daily bread be released. Let it 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 be released. Let Ramanto <laughs> 
Nazo, Dimanto Lebrezze, Yabala Baba, Remento Lebrandaba, Rakapala Bada Branaza, Yamranda Bada Baba, Ipale Branaza, Yamanda Bada Brada Bazan Tala Bada, Yakapala Branda Brada Bazo, Yamanda Brada Bada Baha, Ikapala Brandoza, Yabale Baba, Yabale Brandoza, Yatala Branda Bazika, Lebranda Bada Bada Bazan Tala Ikabrada Bada Baha, Yabranda Bazan Tala Baha, Yakapala Bada Baha, Ibranda Bada Baza, Yabranda Bada Baha, Yakapala Ba, Rebenda Ba, Zebranda Ba, Rekepa, 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 Jamrana Madoza, Ikepele Brenda Bada Brazuza, Rebenda Baha, Yakamando Brenda Bezi Balibaba. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, the Holy Spirit just asked me a question. All right? And, and there is no question that he asked without an answer. So, he is drawing my attention to something. And I think it's something that we need to talk about briefly. And then we pray for wisdom. All right? Now, listen to me. He says, now, what do you do after you have received a prophetic word? What do you do after you have received a prophecy? So, Spirit of God, give us the answer because thou knowest everything. What do you do when you receive a prophetic word? Whether from a prophet or the Spirit of God spoke to you himself. Or you saw it in a vision. You saw it in a dream. What do you do? Because you see, one of the things that is plaguing us, one of the things that is plaguing us in Christendom is that when we receive prophetic words, we go home. And then when we go home, we just go and sit. And then the, 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 the thing that we say to ourselves is this. If God wants to do it, then he himself is going to bring it to pass. Yes, listen, there is a God aspect and there is a you aspect. Let me say this again. There is a God aspect and there is a you aspect. The two of you must come together in order for the fulfillment of that prophetic word. And what do I mean by this? As I'm speaking to you, the narrative that the Holy Spirit that dropped in my spirit is when Elijah had prophesied that there will not be rain. And the Bible says for two or three years thereabout, there was no rain in the land. And then the Spirit of God came and told the prophet that I am going to send rain. So he went and then he went to now release that word that God has spoken to him to Ahab that God is going to send rain. Now we are going to look at it from the prophet's standpoint. When the prophet had released that word, the Bible says that after everything is said and done, the prophet now journeyed onto the mount of God. And then when he got onto that mountain, he began to pray. My brothers and sisters listening to me on Facebook, listening to me on YouTube, listening to me on TikTok, every prophetic word that what is released, there is an assigned demon that has been released to buffet you, to distract you, to weaken you, to blind you, to obstruct you, so that you don't step into that destiny that God has for you. Listen, the Bible is very clear. He says that for whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. I'm not making sense to you. So if you want to be an overcomer, that you must be rooted in Christ because he, Christ, is faith. Now, that's a separate message altogether. But I need you to understand that when a prophecy is released, when a prophecy is released, eh, 
there are spirits that are assigned to you immediately from the demonic kingdom. And their assignment is this. Do not allow them to step into this word. Because when God releases a prophecy, he is releasing it for you to understand eh, the assignment and for you to have a revelation into your purpose. So when you step into what you become, and once you become who God has ordained you to be, now you become a serious threat to the camp of the enemy. Am I making sense to you? Hallelujah. Amen. So, so the prophets decided to go onto the mountain. And when the prophet went onto the mountain, the prophet now, the Bible says, that tucked his head in between his knees. And he began to pray. Now, prayer is one of the most important things to birth out a prophetic word. Am I making sense? The Bible says that when Zion traveled, she brought forth. Am I making sense? When Zion traveled, she brought forth. That means that when a prophetic word is released unto you, you have now an assignment to begin to travel in the presence of God. Now, the, 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 why is it that? Have you asked yourself this question? That the prophet could have prayed Anyway, he could have went under a tree to pray. He could have went into a cave to pray. He could have stayed where he was to pray. But why did he go on top of the mountain? Was it because he wanted to see the, the, the nations and the kingdoms of the world? No, I want to believe. According to my deduction, that, see, the Bible typifies a mountain to be the presence of God. That's what the Bible says that, the Bible says in Obadiah 17, that upon Mount Zion shall there be deliverance. All right? Who shall ascend unto the mount of God? Am I making sense? So, the prophet needed to enter into the presence of God. So that means that whatever a prophetic word is released, immediately you must now enter into the presence of God. The Bible says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he will deliver me from the snare of the fowler. So that prophetic word has been released as a key to unlock your destiny and the enemy is fighting to keep the door closed. Is fighting to trap you so that you will tumble over and fall. So the best place for you to be is the presence of God. And this is the secret that many people do not know. Am I making sense to you? Lemandu serebe de hava. Zekate branda bada braza kapa le badushe. Imato rebe de ha, zama kapanda bra, zerebe de branda da da zuze rekepa, makapanda bra da zuze ya, oh Jesus, mantala badoze, erekatele ba, azure bede, remento le branda da da bra zuze rekepa, 
Makapalaba. Can somebody pray in the Holy Ghost? Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Can somebody pray in the Holy Ghost? Katala ratala baha. Ireke terebe de brandeze. Jemranda badaduze. Iko prada baduzere. Iko palabranda badabranda dadazu. Epe kepe. Lipanta pa. Zapulepe. Iko rebe deze. Listen, let me tell you. Let me tell you. If you think that the devil is going to sit down for you to develop your character, for you to develop your spiritual capacity, for you to be able to ascend to the highest mountain, for you to enter into the presence of God, for you to become, then you are deceiving yourself. One of the days, I, I, as, as I was praying, the Lord spoke to me and confirmed it through a preaching, and he said that, see, Christianity is warfare. We are at war. Your advantage is the presence of God. Your advantage is what? Is the presence of God. Why do you think the Apostle Paul will say to Timothy that war with your prophecies? Those words that went forth concerning your life. War with your prophecies. Some of you, when you receive prophetic words, you don't write it down. You don't write it down. Zemrende beha, ya kapali bado shebre de bedeha. Ah, libada brazi kapa. Thank you, Tilly. I'm gonna make sense. Some of you, you don't, you don't, you discard the words that God speaks to you. Have you forgotten that it is your advantage, and it is your insight into the future, because a time is going to come that you will need that word to ginger you up. For you to be able to continue the journey. The Bible says the other day that David and his men, strong men, they went to war. And when they came back, Ziklag was set on fire. His wives and children were gone. Everything that they had worked for, their property, their houses, their, 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 their couches, uh, and everything that don't, everything is gone. The Amalekites did not leave a single stone on top of another. Can you imagine? His livelihood completely destroyed. And sometimes in moments like that, and I want to believe that some of us, we have encountered those things before. You, 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 you get married to a man, you plan your future, and one day the man says, I don't want to marry you anymore. I am leaving. Can you imagine that? The savings, the plans, the sacrifices, everything. Squandered. Huh? You have a job, 401k, whatever, whatever, KK. And one day you wake up, go to the job, and your supervisor said, we are cutting people. So because of that, you are fired. It's not because of anything that you have done, but we are just cutting people, and we have to let you go. And all of a sudden, you start, you burst out into tears. Why? Because you had no time. You had no time to prepare. You have no time to plan. Everything that you were doing was locked up in that job. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? So David and his men were confronted with this. And they were talking about killing him. They were talking about stoning David. Because apparently he was in charge. He was their leader. And if anything happened, he led them astray. I believe some of them were even thinking that he had planned this. But there is one scripture that stands out. And the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Now, how did David encourage himself in the Lord? David remembered that there is a prophetic word that was released when someone poured the oil on his head and said, you are the king of Israel. And David said, until I am the king, until I have sat on the throne, until I have fulfilled my days as king, I am not going anywhere. Ha! Zamaliatuze, reke paduze rebeha, 
imato zerekepe. So what I say? I say you must enter after a prophetic word is released. You must enter into the presence of God. Some of you have to fast. Some of you have to enter into a lifetime of worship. Some of you, see, you can be living in sin. You can be a prostitute. You can be a fornicator. You can be a thief. You can be a hypocrite. You can be a corrupt politician. You can be a murderer. You can be a drunkard. You can be a lesbian. You can be a homosexual. You can be a bisexual. You can be the worst of the worst of people. Yet still receive a very good prophetic word. Some of these words comes as warning. Some of these words comes as encouragement. Some of these comes as a wake up call. For you to change your life and for you to align yourself. So after the prophecy, you must examine yourself to make sure you are in the faith. You must reposition yourself. Because you see, God will not manifest his blessing into the hands of someone whose life is not in line to his word. So prophecy is a foretelling of what? Of the plans of God. It's advanced knowledge of what God has planned concerning your life. And it's also a revelation of your current state. And your past. Am I making sense to you? So, you must what? One, align yourself to the word of God. Put yourself together. Wash yourself. Sanctify yourself. Consecrate yourself. It is very needed. After that is done, you must now position yourself in the presence of God. It says that if you abide in me, I will abide in you. And the Bible says that I am the what? The way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one goes to the Father but except through me. Am I making sense? So now that you have aligned yourself in relationship with the Holy Ghost, you must now allow the Word of God. The Word of God. You must feast on the Word of God. You must feed on the Word of God. You must bathe in the word of God. You must drink the word of God. There are many, many Christians watching me right now. You don't like the word of God. You don't like to read the Bible. You don't like to study the Bible. You don't love the word of God. How else would you know him if you don't like his word? There are some of you, you have your Bible laying on top of your counter. You open it once a week. Oh, Jesus. Man of God, prophesy. Man of God, prophesy. Prophesy, prophesy. And all these jigons are the one. Who you do prophesy? Master, he will prophesy all right. But prophecy will not be made manifested if you don't do the things that I'm telling you. The Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you, if you are in sin, repent and align yourself. Align yourself. Align yourself. This generation, we have grown accustomed to words that tickle our ears. But we don't want to hear the truth of God's word. We don't want to abide in the truth of God's word. Listen, I am the way, the truth, the truth, the truth. So you can't tell me you are a lover of Jesus, but yet you don't love truth. When the truth of God's word is being spoken to you, you get offended, you get bitter, you get frustrated, you threaten to leave the church. Hey, as if you are doing me. No, you are not doing me. You are doing yourself. Anyone that when the truth of God's word is spoken to you, 
and you threaten to leave the church, it's a demon. A demon is now bothering you. Oh yes, a spirit has entangled you and blinded you to the truth. You need deliverance instantly. You can quote me on that, I am telling you. Yes, yes. If the truth of God's word is spoken and you get offended, you get bitter, you are sick. Something is wrong. Yes. We must be lovers of the truth if we are lovers of God. We must be what? Lovers of the truth if we are lovers of God. David said this, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. So, can I, can I take a diversion right now? Eh, let me take a diversion right now. This is what David said. Let's analyze this word. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. How did he get the word in his heart? Through meditation. Through what? Meditation. So, beyond, besides, above, be, uh, 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 in addition to reading God's word to know the truths and the stories in scripture to familiarize yourself. Like the Bible says, this book of law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Uh, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Uh, you must also meditate there in a night. I mean, it's when you wake up in the morning, you are constantly thinking about the word of God. What can I do, O oh God? What word have you spoken? What does this mean, Holy Spirit? See, we, we like to use the term kononia. Kononia this, kononia that, kononia this, kononia that. But do you know what kononia is? Kononia is fellowship with the Holy Spirit communion with the holy spirit so if you truly commune commune fellowship with the holy spirit there must be evidence eh? there must be evidence there must be an aroma there must be some kind of 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 of, of what do you call it ah uh, ah uh, I'm out of words. I was saying, be 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 and dead. I say, only yes, Christo. Eh, I spend the time. Am I making sense? Yeah, yeah. So meditation, pondering over God's word. The Bible says that I will keep in perfect peace. He whose mind is stayed on me. I will keep in perfect peace. He whose mind is what? Is stayed on me. I will keep in perfect peace. He is whose mind is stayed on me. So if you don't have peace in your mind, that means that your mind, if you don't have peace in your mind in your life, that means your mind is not stayed on God's word. That means God's word is not your focal point. That means you have not been spending time in the closet with this word. Because when you spend time, when you have intercourse with the spirit of God in the closet, you will be impregnated with divine character, with divine nature. You with divinity and then your life uh, will become an example a representation of what heavens uh, is all about i will keep in perfect peace he whose mind is stayed on me so after you receive the prophetic word master that is the time that you need to be studying more study to show yourself approved a workman that needed not to be ashamed Rightly dividing the word of truth. So if God has prophesied to you and told you, sir, told you that he's going to take you to the nations and all the scripture you know eh, is John 10, 30, I am my father and one. You have failed to prepare yourself. Eh? So if God, who is not a lie, eh, fulfills his word and now puts you on the world platform, 
And all you can quote is John, John 10, 30, I am my father, I want. And even that, you don't even know how to exit the word. You have disgraced yourself. You have disgraced the kingdom. I was watching a video by Nathaniel Bassi. And he said that, see, anointing is good. You must desire anointing. But you must also prepare yourself for excellence. Right? And he was speaking in the area of music. So, if you have not prepared yourself and you don't know how to sing the, the C key, you don't know how to sing B flat, you don't know how to sing F sharp, and every key we give you, you are flattening and you are sharpening, God will allow you to be a local champion, but he will not take you to an international platform. Why? Because if he takes you to an international platform, you are going to be an embarrassment to the kingdom. Study to show yourself approved. Eh? So, if God has prophesied that you are a praise and worship leader and is going to take you to the world, eh? it is not now that you are also focused on local songs. You must learn how to speak, you must learn how to sing Swahili songs. You must learn how to sing Spanish songs. You must learn how to sing French songs. Because he says, I'm taking you to the world. So if someone sees you and invites you to a Francophone country, and then when you go, all these songs you know how to sing is, uh, 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 what do you call it? Senor Masa, how is a Francophone country people going to understand Senor Radia Okayahua? You understand? So, so, you see, we leave all the work for the Holy Spirit to do. But, you see, you have a part to play. Develop yourself. Be in the presence. Because, see, the more you spend time in the presence of God, the more you become like him. The more you pick on his nature. The prophet went onto the mountain. And he stayed on the mountain. And he said, I am not coming down until... Until I see a manifestation. Master, you have to pray. You have to pray. Those of you that God is taking worldwide, that you can only pray for 30 minutes, you have failed. I'm, I'm making sense to you. Are, are you. are you still there on, on Facebook and YouTube? You have failed. You have failed. No, 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 no. See, see, the reason why I'm saying you have failed, it's not that, it is not good that you're not trying. Excuse me, let, let me get a paper towel. Amen. The, 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 the sweat is real. All right, so bear with me. Let me be a bit comfortable. The reason why I'm saying you have failed is not that you have not tried. You have tried. It's good to try, and it's good to keep trying. But see, 30 minutes must not be your landmark. It must not be your limit. You must be able to develop your capacity. Develop your capacity. Develop your capacity. So if you pray 15 minutes, Strive to get to 20. Strive to get to 30. Strive to get to an hour. Strive to get to an hour and 30 minutes. Strive to get to two hours. And continue to build up your capacity. Yes. Build up your capacity. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, this is a scripture that the Holy Spirit just told me. He says that, do you remember what the Lord said? All right. In, in the book of Genesis. He says that God did not send rain because there was no man to till the ground. Let me repeat it. God did not send rain. When I look here, I'm looking at the people on Facebook. All right, instead of looking here. So, it's a, <laughs> uh, forgive me. God did not send rain because there was no man to till the ground. So until there is a man to till the ground, God will not send the rain. Those of you that are praying for increase, I want to see, I want to prophesy, I want to be sharp, I want to go to the nations, I want, I want my members to increase, I want the ministry to expand, to bloom. Have you increased your capacity through prayer, through studying the word of God, through fasting? Have you increased your capacity? 
Are you telling the ground? See, God is a God of order. There must be structures in place. There must be discipline in place. Uh, that will now, that, 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 that will not carry you. I'm not making sense. Some of you are not consistent in your Bible reading. You are not consistent in prayer. You are not consistent devotee or servant in the house of God. There are many of you music ministers. Uh, you don't even have a pastor over you. You don't have a pastor over you. You are not submitted. You are not accountable. And you expect God to explode you. God is a God of order. God is a God of what? Of order. God is a God of order. God is a God of order. You want the prophecy to be made manifested? You have to work. You have to work. If God says that he's going to make you a business entrepreneur, don't just sit down and fold your hands and cross your legs and say, I'm going to be a business entrepreneur. What business have you researched into? Huh? What business? What do you even know about business? You take courses in relation to business. You study business administration, business management. Am I making sense to you? You, uh, you identify yourself, you, 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 you feed yourself with knowledge. The Holy Spirit is not going to break your head into two and put the knowledge in your head. It's not going to do that. Christians, wake up. Wake up. God is not a magician. Wake up. God is a protocol God. He is an other God. Eh? Am I making sense to you? Study. What business are you interested in? Real estate? Boutique? Opening a store, what? Research into it. Do your due diligence. Gather information. In the process of you gathering information, God will open an opportunity for you to be connected to a person who may have a capital or who may know someone that has a capital or who may know someone that can connect you to somebody. And by process of conversation and prayer, God begins to connect you with different people. And by the time you realize, boom, voila, your business is open. After the business is open, there are things that you must set in place for your increase. You have to have vision. TGJ says something. Eh? TGJ says something. He says, God never gave us a chair. And God did not give us a table. God did not give us a tablet. And God did not give us a bed. God gave us a tree. God gave us what? A tree. So God will give you a tree. What you make of that tree is you, not him. He will give you insights and revelation as to the potential of the tree. But you have to cut the tree. You have to trim the tree. You have to make it, but God will give you insights. And when you take the step to make something out of your imagination of what the tree can be, God will bring people that are willing to help and willing to support. And then they'll pick you up and take you to the next level, the next dimension, the next phase of your life. I know I have released a lot of information. It is not me. It just keeps coming. And I can't stop it. Today, my target was we will pray for pastors. But you see, God interrupted me. And that is the best place to be. When he can trust you enough to interrupt you. And now speak his own words through you. All we are is just mouthpieces. He is the boss. He is what? He is the boss. He is the boss. He is the boss. Eh? So, Make sure that after the prophecy, go and examine your life. Check to make sure you are in line with God. You are submitted to divine, divine principles. You are submitted to God. All right? And if you are submitted to God, then make sure that your lifestyle is a sweet aroma in its nostrils. Excuse sin. Separate yourself from sin. 
come out from among them because now you know that God is watching you and he's taking delight in your life. Make it a habit to make him your habitation. That means you must do whatever it takes to ascend into the presence of God and stay there. Abide in his presence through worship, through the reading of your word, the word of God, meditation, eh? meditation. Let your mind be transformed and renewed by the word of God. It is a necessity. Huh? And then make sure that you are living a fasting life and a prayer life. The Bible says, watch and pray that you do not enter into temptation. The flesh is weak, but the what? The spirit, I say, the, the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So, if you can't pray, join yourself to someone that prays. Eh? Your association is very important. The people you work with, the people you commune with, the people you talk with, the people you associate yourself with is very important. If you work with the wise, you will be wise. So don't come and tell me that your friends, all your friends are weak smokers. And you are trusting God that God will use you to change their life. Master, think, think, think. Eh? That all your friends are, are drunkards. No, 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 no. No. Be careful of your surroundings. Live a prayerful life. And be submitted to the local ministry. It is very important. Those of us that don't have a problem submitting to God. But we have a problem submitting to a local ministry. Do you think that God is a... Fra <laughs> you think that God is an impartial God? Or God is a disorder God? God is a God of order. If you break any of his laws and his principles, master, forget it. Forget it. You can be the, 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 the most, the most, uh, uh, the most significant giver in the church. But if you are not abiding by his principles, forget it. Forget it. You have wasted your years and your time. Forget it. Submit to the local ministry. You must be accountable to a pastor. You must have a pastoral oversight over your life for guidance and mentorship. And, and you see, you don't go pick and choose who you want, but God Himself will choose for you whom He has appointed for you. He said, I will give you pastors according to my heart, and they will feed you with knowledge and understanding. My time is up. If you can do these things that I'm telling you, eh, you go far. You go far. Listen, you will what? You will go far. And by meaning, I'm not saying you're going to be trending, no. and I'm not saying you're going to be famous, no. and I'm not saying you're going to be popular, no. but what I'm saying is you will go far in God. You will be established and you will be fulfilled, and you will achieve your destiny. And that is what is important in the kingdom. Being able to fulfill your purpose is what is important. May God bless you for tuning in. And may God continue to increase you. And as you continue to be faithful to come and pray, may God shower blessings upon your life. May the work of your hands prosper. And may God bless you financially. May God cause his word concerning your life to be established in the name of Jesus. God bless you. If you have a prayer request, you can submit it. Inbox me or send me a direct message and we will stand in the gap and pray with you. If you have a question that you need an answer to, you can also send your question and we will make time and then we will talk to you. Amen. God bless you. Have a very nice week, uh, rest of the day and God willing, we will be back tomorrow to spend more time in the presence. God bless you. Have an awesome, awesome day. God bless you, Tilly. God bless you, Abby. Ohima Christabel. God bless you, Lady Mary. Boy, do God bless you. Yeah. Uh, Lillian, God bless you. Suzanne. 
uh, of you god bless you uh, evangelist emma god bless you all of you on the live god bless you 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 i will see you tomorrow god willing amen and amen god bless you all for your roses and your gifts god bless you